Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's news is Data Breach of Palooza. And what I mean by that is stories of data breaches that have been disclosed or confirmed in the past few days. Now, the news starts with the breach of the Trump Hotel Collection. This was a breach that was rumored a while ago, but most recently, the Trump Hotel Collection actually confirmed that they suffered some sort of cybersecurity incident. It sounds like they got malware uh, on their point of sale systems and that some attackers have been monitored monitoring their payment transactions at different hotels located in the United States. On top of that, today we also heard that Kmart Australia had a security incident as well. Any person that has been shopping in the Australian version of Kmart's online store might have had their personal details stolen as well. The third story involves Patreon. Patreon is a site where you can actually donate money to artists or other people that you want to be the patron of. Anyways, Patreon suffered a data breach as well, which they disclosed today. In their email, they said the attackers stole uh, personally identifiable information from their database, so things like your name, your email address, your, your billing address, and things like that. But later in the day, the stolen data was actually publicly dumped online, and it's 15 gigabytes of data, including many databases, source code, and a lot of other information as well. Finally, that's not even the biggest news. Experian, a credit company, actually had a big data breach as well. Specifically, the Experian servers used by T-Mobile uh, to check for financial applications had a data breach, and the attackers stole the uh, information of 15 million different T-Mobile users or folks that tried to apply for a T-Mobile mobile account from September uh, of 2013 all the way of September this year. So quite a lot of data was stolen from Experian as well. So that's a lot of breaches. You know, I'm already suffering from breach fatigue, but four different breaches in one day. Now, the information stolen actually seems to differ. Uh, in most cases, credit card information wasn't stolen. It's mostly personally identifiable information like your name, your email address, your normal address, and things like like that. Of note to the Experian breach, social security numbers could have also been stolen, and those are very, very valuable pieces of information to criminals out there. And finally, of course, with the Patreon data dump, we're seeing a lot of other information might have been stolen there. So what's a user to do about this? Well, if you've applied for T-Mobile services in the past few years, if you have a Patreon user account, or if you've shopped online recently at the Australian Kmart, your data is out there. Now, most most of these organizations are offering things like free credit monitoring for people that are affected and definitely take advantage of it. It's free and it will alert you if an attacker is trying to create accounts in your name. However, it doesn't stop them. So some better advice is things like putting a fraud alert on your credit accounts. This will prevent anybody from opening new accounts for you because you have that fraud alert. You could even take it a step further and if you don't need any more credit, if you don't plan yourself to open open new accounts, you can even put a freeze on new credit accounts. That sometimes does cost money, but it's a good way to ensure that attackers don't take advantage of this information to steal stuff from you. Another thing to definitely do, especially in the Patreon case, if you have user accounts at, at say, Patreon, you definitely need to change your password just in case the attackers do crack the stolen passwords. So that covers users, but what about organizations protecting their own customers' data? Well, we don't know how these attacks happen happen, so I can't give you any specific tips. But generally, you need to have defense in depth, we all know that, but more importantly, encryption. We need to treat our networks like they're already compromised. And if we have sensitive data, we need to use strong encryption so that if it does get in the wrong hands, it is at least somewhat protected. Another big tip is having visibility tools, tools that can help us detect when we have been breached and can actually give us a chance to prevent the attacker from exfiltrating that data. Preventative defenses are great. You definitely need those to try to stop the breaches, but focus a little 
little bit on detection so that you can actually find out when you've been breached before it's too late. Finally, I've talked about the kill chain before. If you haven't heard of it, look up WatchGuard's kill chain webinar to learn about it. But the last three parts of the kill chain are all about protecting your data or trying to catch attackers that are already in your network. You need to spend more time focusing on those last three parts of the kill chain because that will give you an opportunity to prevent your data from leaving your network, even in the case of uh, you being compromised. In any case, tons of breaches lately. Hopefully you can learn from these breaches by actually improving your defenses before it happens to you. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.